See, as Christians, as believers, we have this, we have more on our lives than just work. It's more than that. And there's a joy too. What happened? I was thinking when he's saying that, this is not even in my notes here, but I'm thinking, what happens if I was in Nero's time and he would rest at all the Christians? torture them, tie him to a, a branch, dip him in tar, and he lined his courtyard with Christians, and he enjoyed that and lit them on fire. I'm thinking to myself, when he's saying that, I'm thinking to myself, if I was dipped in wax, he said, and I was hung up there, what would I be thinking at that very moment? Tell him I'm busy. All right. <laughs> What would, they, what would you be thinking at that very moment? I'd be speaking in tongues. That's right what I'd be doing, right? Amen. Be speaking in the Holy Ghost. But what would you be thinking at that very moment? Nothing else matters at that moment but what you're thinking at that very moment. Are you screaming, God, save me? Or, God, you get all the glory no matter what. Absent from my body, I'm present with God. That very moment you take your last breath, hallelujah, we have a hope that the world doesn't have. We have something that He gives us because we're believers. We said yes one day to Him, and when we did, He said, I was, we sang it, I'll take care of everything. If you just trust me, if you follow me, if you believe in me, if you do what I tell you to do, and it will be obedient. I like what you said about offering, because you know what? Giving offering is like, I don't know, it's like obedience to God. God, you said it, I believe I'll do it. It's just like saying, yes, God, I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe you rose from the dead. I believe you're coming back, God. Amen. It's just like that. So what do you need? First of all, you need salvation. Every one of us needs salvation. Amen? So if you have it, praise God. If you don't, listen up. Amen? Acts chapter, let's turn to Acts. We're going to go through the Bible a few verses, so if you have it on your phone, it might be quicker, but I'm going to go through my, my written word, the Bible here. Acts chapter uh, 4, if you will. This is one verse of thousands of verses that talk about God's salvation. This was when Peter and John were standing before the Sanhedrin. You remember? They were going to church one morning after the resurrection, on their way to church to go pray. Guess what? There was a crippled man there. He was begging for money. He didn't have anything. He's saying, help me, help me. Give me some money. Give me some alms. And, he said, and Peter and John says, hey, silver and gold have I none but such that I have in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. What would it look like if we had a church that would say, wherever I go, God, use me. And if I meet someone that has a need, help me meet that need so you can be glorified. And as he glorified Jesus in that moment, they got arrested. <laughs> and this is what they said, Acts 4. They got thrown into jail, basically. They were questioned. What are you doing? Who are you talking to? Well, remember the Jesus that you crucified? Remember the Jesus that, that is no longer in this tomb? That Jesus gave us the power to do what we just did. Hallelujah. That's what you have. You have the living power of God in you. Amen. Can I shout this morning? All right, I, was, I, I can be real calm this morning. That's what I said to start off with this morning. God, don't let me get too excited. That's what I said. I said, I can't help it. <laughs> this is the way God made me. Amen? Is that okay? Yes. All right. You got it. You get it all. Okay, look at Acts chapter 4, verse 12 says this. Write it down in your Bibles. Highlight it in your phones, in your iPads. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given by man by which you must be saved. Hallelujah. That's Jesus. There's no other way. So when this lady says, I'm, I'm a Buddhist or I'm a Hindu or whatever, and they come to, they're going to come to Thanksgiving dinner, guess what? We're going to love on them until they know Jesus. Amen? And you need to know Jesus. How many remember the day that you said yes? You were in jail, you were in trouble, you were, you were depressed, you were without hope, and all of a sudden you said yes to Jesus. I remember that day like it was today. Because yes. my life was hopeless, and then I had, in that moment, when I said yes, to, I believe, this is what I believe. In that moment, I believed that Jesus was the Son of God. That moment I said yes, He's, this is what I said, you're real! And I'm, in, I'm in my little... I was in uh, the, the brig, the jail, uh, Campbell, June, North Carolina, and I was in the library because I had hurt myself, so I couldn't work on do the stuff that all the other guys were doing. Anyway, so I was in the in that in the library, and I was reading my Bible that Tina flipped in my bag as I went into jail. 
Anyway, I remember saying, because I grew up in a, in, I grew up in church. I grew up in the Catholic church. My grandma took me all the time to church, right? But I didn't know Jesus. I just know the reverence for Jesus. I knew the reverence for being in the building. I knew the priest had some kind of special thing, but I didn't know Jesus. But at 19 years old, God came into that library. The presence of the Lord filled that place, and I knew Jesus was real. Amen. Amen. And I said, yes, Jesus, whatever you want me to do, I will serve you for the rest of my life. Amen. And God decided to use me to do this. Amen. Isn't he crazy? God just was so funny to me. Amen. He, has, he loves you. He use you if you just say yes. Yes then and yes today. It never changes. The salvation of God is continuous. Remember, we taught, we teach over and over in, in this church. You are saved. I got saved. I am being saved every day. God's changing me into his character and his presence and his love and his grace. And all that is filling in me if I just let him. And I know one day when I see him face to face, hallelujah, I will be saved. Amen? Amen. The same word. Every, every place you have the same word. We are being saved when we say yes and we believe that Jesus really is the Son of God and He did die for our sins and He forgave me of all the junk in my life and I was cleaner than clean could be at that moment. God changed me, amen, and He can change you and He continues to change you now. Yes. There's things in our mind and our hearts that we say, we're saying no to God over and over. No, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. I'm just, that's just me, God. That's the way, and we get real spiritual. God, that's the way you created me. No! <laughs> God wants to change you into His image, His love, His grace, His compassion for the world. Amen? That's what God wants to do. Salvation is for every one of us. Christ died for you, and He died for the world. Listen, there's going to be a judgment coming. I was talking to a pastor this week. God is changing his heart too, man. Like a lot of pastors, I think God's doing something in America and across the world. A lot of pastors are getting back to the gospel. They're getting back to re teaching the truth. They're, they're not about the, the attendance or the money or about the building. It's about our people being changed for his kingdom. And I was talking to this pastor, and I've known him for a long time. He says, oh, Bob, I said, he says to me, Bob, you know, nobody preaches judgment anymore. He says, I can't, I looked on our website, I looked on uh, colleges' websites, I looked at uh, universities that teach the gospel, and nowhere it talks about hell or about judgment, that it's coming for all of us, amen? amen. And so I say, listen, folks, we know there's going to be the time where the sheep and the goats are going to be uh, evaluated by Jesus himself. Right? Don't be a goat. I'm going to put that in a t-shirt, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a goat, be a sheep. Right? Sheep are not. Sheep follow Jesus. That's what we want you to do. Is be saved and continually be saved. Follow after Jesus. Paul says, if you don't know how to follow after Jesus, follow after me. That's right. Right? Let me show you how to get started. Yeah. Let me show you how to have a hunger for the Word of God. Let me show you how to walk in not in the, after the flesh, but the things of the, of the, of the Spirit. Remember, Andy taught last week, a spirit one another on. Uh -huh. Right? And part of that sermon was don't sin anymore and help each other. Amen? The reason we don't help each other is because we have sin in our lives. Did I say that out loud? Yeah. Yeah. We have, we're selfish. We don't serve one another in this room or in their community because we're sweet. We, it's all about me. Yes, and God wasn't, Jesus wasn't about me, was he? He gave his life for the world. The whole world. Are you excited yet? You get in there, huh? All right. Well, also, the other thing, we need salvation, but you also need to be baptized. Amen. If you haven't been baptized, the sacrament, and this is what I mean by baptism, all right? I mean water, submersion, baptized. I don't mean sprinkling or anything like that. I mean totally giving your life fully to yeah. Jesus in that moment. When I got saved, I laid my life down in that water, and I said, this is what we all say this when we get baptized, right? I'm going to lay my life down in the water, my old life, and I'm going to raise a new person in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. Can you say amen? amen. All things become new. Well, if all things become new, why aren't they new? Just side note. Right? I laid myself down in the water, and, the, and I said, to Je I'm saying to Jesus or the pastor or whoever baptized me, what did I say? I said, I laid my old life down, and I'm going to come up a new creature in Christ Jesus, Old things are gone. Right? 
I might be struggling with stuff, so I'm going to say, God, whatever I'm struggling with, I'm laying it down right now. And I'm coming up a new creature in Christ Jesus. You know what else it means? This is what the church doesn't teach anymore. It means that if I, not only that, that I lay down my old life and I, I'm a new creature in Christ, I'm going to start following Jesus now. I'm telling the world, I'm following Jesus. That's what baptism is. I'm following Jesus. But you know what else it means? It means if I get dipped in wax and I get hung up a tree and get lit, I'm going to not deny Christ. I'm going to give my life for the kingdom of God. They don't teach that in American churches. I'm willing to die for Jesus so the people that don't know him will come to know him as Lord and Savior. I'm willing to give my life, my will, my things, everything I have for his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Oh, good preaching, Pastor Bob. Yeah. Amen. Come on. I'm willing to give everything, my career, my wealth, my home, my car, my, I don't know, your cell phone, my wife. I don't know. We have to find out. <laughs> Sacrifice everything for his kingdom. I'm laying, that's what baptism means. Yeah. Doesn't mean I just got baptized and I joined the church. It has nothing to do with joining the church. It's the big church. It's the church that stretched all over the world. Every person that calls himself a believer. So a lot of, a lot of times you relegate baptism to joining a specific body of believers. That's not what it's about. It's about joining his kingdom and saying, yes, God. I remember when Sandy got baptized. We, she, we were, she wasn't supposed to be baptized that day. It was like, wasn't on the schedule. She says, I need to be baptized right now. Right now, I'm going to be baptized. Yeah. Whoa, we baptized Sandy. Yes, because you heard the mouth. I'm going to follow Jesus all my life, everything within me. I love you guys. I love what's going on in this church right now. People are saying yes to the mission, yes to Jesus, yes to whatever it takes to bring people to Jesus. It's just, I, it, it blows my mind to see what God is doing right now. It's amazing. I love it. God is doing a great thing in you. The next thing you need, every one of us need, is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need to know that it was a gift from the Father to you and me. So we can do the mission. I said, why isn't the mission getting done? Why is the church not growing? I'm not talking about our church. I'm just talking about the church overall. Why is things happening? Because people don't understand the power that God gave us yeah. after salvation so you can do the work of the ministry. Yeah. Whatever you are. Yeah. If you were... Uh, in computers or at a, at a university or whatever you do, you do it for God's kingdom. And God will bless it. I'm telling you, it's like amazing, right? Amen. He can give you wisdom and knowledge that you can't even. How did that happen? Where did that information come from? God will give it to you. Yes. He wants to bless you and pour out a blessing in you that you cannot contain. Amen. Hallelujah. And He said, I'm going to give you a helper because I know that maybe some of you might be a little shocked. Maybe some of you might be intimidated by the things of this world. Or maybe some of you are struggling with things in your flesh. But listen, I'm going to give you somebody that's going to help you understand the message yeah. so you can go and do the work of the ministry. It's the Holy Spirit. See, God knows everything about you and everything that you need. I always wonder why Christians say, I don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't get it. Like, did you read what it says here in Acts? Do you read anything about the Holy Spirit? How can you walk in the Spirit if you deny the Spirit of God? Right. How can I deny my flesh and walk in the Spirit? How can I overcome my fleshly desires if I don't walk in the Spirit of God? If I have to believe that there is a Spirit, the Spirit was given to us by God, our Father, through Jesus, to empower you to do the work that He's called us to do. That's what the Holy Spirit... What, how can you be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and all over the world if you don't have the power of the Spirit? Because my flesh gets weak. I get tired. I got pain in my body. I just don't want to do it. Ask my son. I say it a lot. I'm done. But I can't help myself. I get excited about this all the time because God's Spirit is alive in me. I, yes, I don't, when I don't know what else to do, I pray in the Spirit of God. I don't know what I'm praying. I don't know about in my understanding, but I know I'm refreshed and empowered when I'm done. Amen? Yeah. So pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray with power. Amen? So listen, I want to so in, in the third, the third thing, you, or fourth thing you need, if you're taking notes, if not, I can freak it out for you. 
email them, text them to you, whatever. I got like the ability. We need to be disciples. Okay, turn there, Matthew 28. I just want to read it again. Most of you know it. You've been here for more than a week. <laughs> Pastor Bob, you guys preach the same thing over and over and over and yeah. over again. Yes, I do because, listen, it's going to explode in this place. Yes. You need God's presence more than you need my words. You need God's word more than you need anything I say. You need God to change your life. I can't do it if I talk softly and properly. <laughs> or if I shout. It doesn't matter. You need Amen. God. Amen. Amen. And you need to be discipled to do that. So I, I want to say this. If you're part of a mission community, I love you. If you're not part of a mission community, I love you. Equally. But I'm telling you, when you're part of a group of people, you challenge each other, you pray for one another, it changes. You need to be part of a group. Amen? Our mission of the community is a place where we disciple each other. Each other. So we challenge each other. Well, that, does, does the Word of God mean that? Does it really mean that? Well, I think it means this. Well, let's pray about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk it out. I love our group. Our group is always... I, I, I try not to do this in our group. <laughs> Linda helps me and Tina helps me a lot. So, you know, but in our group, we have, everybody shares a little bit about, because we only get like an hour and a half, right, Bobby? It's not a long time, but it's just everybody gets to share a little bit about what's going on, what that scripture means to them, and then it's just amazing how we come together and understand what God's word, how it challenges us to get rid of sin and be more like Jesus, and then we pray it. We always pray at the end, except for this Wednesday, we pray the whole time. Uh, you know, practicing honoring God. Uh, plus, we showed some pictures from our trip, so that was kind of fun too. But anyway, it, we just have a, <laughs> we have a good time, amen. You know? Loving and caring for one another. So if you can be part of a group, be part of a group. If you want to start a group, you know, come see Pastor Andrew, and we'll get going and help you start another group. We just believe God wants us to be disciple. Yes. And what discipleship does? It challenges me to be more like Jesus. Amen? It really does. It helps me to say, you know what happens in our, I don't know, Andrew's group too, I'm sure, right? And we're confessing sins to each other. We're, we're confessing hurt and disappointments and things too, because we can do that in our group where, you, you know, where else are you going to do that? Like, hey, I got a problem in my life. Can you guys pray for me? It's like, man, yeah, of course. You know, I'm going through the same thing. Or, you know, I used to go through that too. And it's just, it was just, it's just full of compassion and love. It's what it's supposed to be. I don't know if it's perfect, but you know what? I, mean, I love it because lives are being changed and getting closer to Jesus. That's what it's all about. The Holy Spirit, it says, in Ephesians uh, 5, 18, it says, Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. What? What's it? Don't, do, don't yield to your flesh desires. How are you going to do that is being walking in the Holy Spirit. How many? Oh, I don't raise your hand. I'll do it at the end, okay? I'm like, I just want to get, let's confess it right now. Let's get it over with. It's a Sunday morning, but you know what? Hey, Jesus wants to change you. Amen? Amen. What else do you need? You need money. How many need money? I think it this this morning. I, was like, I started laughing in the office because I'm like, the Holy Spirit said, write down money. I'm like, no, this doesn't even flow with my sermon, God. You know, like, what do you mean money? How many need money? What, what, you, do, you all need it because that's why you guys work, right? Come on, let's be honest. You need money, right? Everybody needs money. But, you know what? God has more money than you are able to even yes. pay me if you just give your life over to the day, right? Yeah. Right? So, God, I'm working my, I'm working my butt off. I'm working hard because I have to, you know, pay the mortgage payment, electric bill, insurance, life insurance, car insurance. Uh, what else we pay? Anyway, whatever. You know, credit cards, whatever. You know, Christmas is coming. You got to pay for that. Wait, we need money. God knows that. It's not like a, it's not a dirty word. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. It doesn't say money is the root of all evil. You say amen to that? The pastor did say that. Yeah, we all need money. God knows it, so let's pray, God, and he'll give you what you need. Amen? amen. Maybe what you need is already what you have. Maybe we're on, a, on a, that wheel trying to spin to get more. We, 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 should, we should get off that wheel and say, God, thank you for what I have. I'm just saying that. I'm just trying to help you. God says he gives you all that you need, amen, according to his riches and glory, in Christ Jesus. You follow Jesus, chase after Jesus, grab Jesus, get a hold of Jesus, love on Jesus, and he'll give you all that you need, amen? Amen. Love, come on, you know what, all right? Come on, you know what? 
Hallelujah. All right, what else? We need, this is uh, number one, two, three, I didn't number it. One, two, three, four, five. Six, number six. Pay attention. You get a point. Yeah. Tell Britt you got a point. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We need prayer. Yes. yes. I don't know how to pray. <laughs> then the Holy Spirit will pray for you. Yes. Oh my goodness. Listen, I, I, I'll be sitting in prayer going, I got, I'm going to set this time, time aside for prayer and I don't know what to say. Or is that just me? <laughs> I'll come into saints where I sit right where Tina's at sometimes and I'm like, okay, God, I don't know what to pray. I'm like, pray for you guys, pray for this stuff, pray for you know, my normal, my family, my kids, all that stuff. I said, I don't, I, I don't know what to pray. <laughs> and then I just start to worship God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hallow be, I say, the, let your glory, this is one of my favorite part, why I like to say always, God, let your glory fill the earth. Lord, let your glory fill my life. Lord, let your glory fill this place. Where you're sitting right now. I pray. And I pray, God, let your glory fill Madison, Wisconsin. Lord, let your glory fill this, this country, this world. Let your glory fill the earth. I love praying that. Because I love God's presence like nothing else. God, I need you. I don't know what else to pray, but I need your glory to fill me and this place and all of a sudden. Presence of God fills this place. And I can enjoy being my father. And I'm not saying anything besides just thanking him and praising him for what he's done, who he is. And then when I run out of words, I pray in the spirit and I just do that mm -hmm. and love doing that. God loves when you pray. It's like we used to be in children's church, so we used to tell uh, the children, we used to do object lessons all the time. And one of the object lessons that we taught the children, we bought an electric drill in. I was like, this is a drill and it has a function, but it doesn't work. You know, you can't drill something if it's not what? It's plugged in. It's got to be plugged into the source. It's got to be plugged into power. And you can't do all the things that you think you should do for God's kingdom unless you're plugged in to his power source. And that's through his Holy Spirit. Amen? And when you have the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm almost done. Hallelujah. If you plug into the power of God, you can do anything that God's put in your heart to do for his kingdom. He says, some of you will stand before kings and witness for him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who's that in this room? I don't know. But amen. And don't say not me, because I remember saying not me to God one time. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> not me, God. And there it was, face to face. But I'm doing it. Thank you. Jesus, I'm not walking down that dark alley with those people. That I, no, I'm not doing that, God. No, what, don't ever say that because you're going to do it. <laughs> I, I'm, t I'm just warning you as a pastor. I'm just telling you, you just sh let me shepherd you for a second. Don't tell God you're not going to do something because that's exactly what you're going to do. Don't fight it because God wants you to do it. That's why I put it in your heart. We say, when you have the thought, I'm not going to do that, who put that thought there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh? God's so amazing. His spirit, we need his spirit. It's funny because I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit just for a minute. I want to pray for you at the end. Just at the end, I want everybody, hey, Tina, uh, just come pray. Can you just put some music on it in a minute? Just something to, uh, we can woo to God with, you know? Something we can woo. Uh, anyway, just put something in there. We get excited. Right? Jesus, yeah. Come on, girl. We know we're going to have some fun. At the end, I, you know, I, I don't want to go back to years ago and remember those things, but man, I remember we had church service. Nobody left church. We didn't want to, I didn't want to leave. That's right. The lights would go off, the janitors closing the doors. Hey, I'm locking the doors. I'm like, fine, I can't leave. Yeah. I remember being in Okinawa, Japan. On this side of the altar, pastor, I, I didn't know what the pastor was preaching. I remember I was just, I was lonely because I missed my home church, but I was going to church anyway. And anyway, I went down to this church and down a couple cities over in Japan, and it was an American Christian church. So I went there, and I just wanted to be with God's people. I didn't just, I just missed it, right? And I remember he started preaching. I was on, I was at the altar like that. 
I just want to, I'm God's presence. I stayed here for the whole sermon. I stayed here to the end. I stayed here to the lights left. Pastor's waiting for me. He goes, uh, how you doing? I was like, it's fine. I'm just fine. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. I'm just fine. I'm just fine. Is anything right? You need it? No, I don't need anything. I just needed to be with God. Not that God wasn't where I was at, but I was seeking Him. Amen? Just fill me, fill me, fill me, fill me, man. Oh, my goodness. I brought that. Then I brought one of my friends to church. He was... He was never the same after that. <laughs> you know, when you invite people to church and all of a sudden they have one of those happy church services, you know, and you're thinking that, you know, my friend's going to leave, you know. Uh -huh. Pastor's preaching on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. People are dancing and shouting and having a good old time. You're going, oh my God, why tonight, God? You know? <laughs> I just brought my friend and finally, you know, after months of talking to him, finally come to church. You know what he said to me? God is in this place. He knew it. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I got a question for you. So, why is the Holy Spirit referred to as wind, fire, and water? Why is the Holy Spirit wind, fire, and holy? Now remember in the day of Pentecost? I got mostly believers in here, right? You remember the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down and tons of fire sat on them? Maybe I see all over this building, tons of fire. Reinhard Bonnke, you ever see his sermons? Yep. Oh, I got to see him in person one time. When? Why is when? I think I said this morning. Why when, God? When blew through that upper room? Because what happens when it gets windy here in Wisconsin? Right before a cold front or a warm front comes through, right? There's change going to happen. There's change happening. The wind of God, the fire saying, there's, there's, I'm cleansing, I'm moving all the old, I'm bringing in some new yes, stuff. Right. You're not going to be the same. It's a different covenant now. You don't have to sacrifice animals anymore, right? You don't, you know, Jesus was a final sacrifice for the whole world. And then I'm going to empower you. How they say, fire, I want to cleanse you. I want all the junk that you identify with, and I'm going to put the true identity that you really are. When back in Genesis, he created you in his image. And all the sins destroyed that image in you. And now God, by his power of the Holy Spirit, is going to cleanse you and make you in his image. He's going to empower you with power to do the call and the work that has to be done next. And why water? Turn to the John chapter 7. Why water? You think like fire comes and then water extinguishes the extinguishes it, right? I mean, how do you, how does the two mix? How many know that fire and water don't mix? It doesn't mix, right? You, can, you can't light a fire and throw water on it because it's going to put out the fire. Not according to God's word. It's different. It's different. When he, you have the fire of God in you and the power of God in you, then out of your heart, out of your belly, out of your most inner being flows living water. You're going to give living water to the world around you, but you can't give out that living water if you don't have the fire in your heart. That's right. you got to have the fire, the power. How many need the fire this morning? I need the fire of God in my heart. I worry about all the time. I can't walk in the spirit if I don't allow the fire of God to cleanse me and change me and move me to do what God's called me to do. Say amen. Amen. Oh, me. But one of two, we're going to take care of it today, man. Hallelujah. We believe, I believe, John 7, 38. I, let's read that. Okay, our 37 and 38 says, On the last and great day of the Lord feast, Jesus stood up and said with a loud voice, See, I, I'm not the only one that's loud. Jesus is loud too, so I got permission to be loud this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I didn't read that to today. This moment just felt like a, that just kind of flowed today. Anyway, thank you, Jesus, for doing that for me this morning. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within them. Hallelujah. By this he meant the Spirit. Look what he even answered it. This is not by your own will. This is 
is by the Spirit of God in you. Hallelujah. Go to that campus. Let the power of God flow in a mighty way that will not, nothing, no program, nothing that we can do, no, no gimmick will work, but the power of God will work in changing your lives and your neighbor's lives and the campus that is here in Madison and across the world. God, by His Spirit, can do that. We cannot do it by our trickery or by our words. It's only by the power of God that it will change your life and my life. Can you say amen? Amen. A little louder. Amen. Come on, a little louder. I hear you. Amen. amen. Let it be so, God. That's what that means. Let it happen. Let it happen. Amen. It says, by his spirit, whom those who believe in him were later to receive. And they talked about an acts that we're going to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Up to that time, the Spirit had not yet been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Has Jesus been glorified? Yes. Has Jesus been glorified? Yes. yes. When he rose out of that grave, out of that death, when Satan thought he had him, amen, when Satan thought he won, Jesus came alive, the Spirit of God entered him, he got up out of that grave cloth, and he walked out of that grave, amen, and now is sitting at the right hand of the Father, shouting loudly, yeah. praying for you and me. I don't know if he shouted loudly, but it says shout here, so I thought I'd add that in, that's Pastor yeah. Miles' version of it, right? <laughs> Go ahead! Do the work I called you to do. I sent the Spirit of God to you so you can be empowered and do the work. Do it. Do the work. Do the work. Do the work. That's what he's praying right now. Amen. Do it. Don't wallow in your sin and disappointments anymore. It's over. That's your old life. We have a new life now in Christ Jesus. If you haven't been, if you need to get baptized again, let's do it. You know, I don't know where you're at in your life right now. If you need to rededicate your life to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, I need you. Let's do it. Let's do whatever it takes, God, so the fire of God will burn in your heart and belly again and you'll be able to do what God's called you to do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm supposed to end right now. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> Amen. I have no more words on the paper. That's what I wrote here. I said, who wants more? Who wants more than what you have right now? Huh? Who wants more? Come on up here. Let's come up here. Let's go. Come on up to the altar. Come on. I want one more. That's what you're saying. You come, on, you come up right now. You're saying, I want more. I want more. Whatever you, whatever you have, God, I want it. I need it. I need more of your power, more of your spirit. I need you. I need your fire. I need water, living water to flow out of me. I need life. I need the life of Jesus to flow out of me. I need power. I need you, Jesus. I need more. And that Jesus morning come. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. Cry out to God. Say, God, I need more. I need you more, God. Come on, go ahead. Cry out to God. I need you, God. I need you, God. I need you.